Good day, this is Jim Patel from Columbia Gorge Community College. This is Digital Electronics 1. This lecture is entitled Combinational Logic Adders. If you recall, binary arithmetic, and let's just add up two one-bit numbers, A and B, and let's use it in long form. What we can do is our truth table, A, B, let's do that the regular way, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. When I add 0 with a 0, what is my output? Obviously 0. When I add a zero with a one. What's my output? A one. When I add a one with a zero, what's my output? A one. Finally, when I get to the last combination in our truth table, one plus one is, yeah, I know you're going to rush to say two. Yes, it is two, but it's the binary equivalent to two. It's one zero. Notice I put that one up there. It's a carry out. And what's it do? It just slides down because there's nothing else there. What I'm trying to do is, is highlight using this long form kindergarten math, there's two outputs. What are the outputs, what are the missing outputs here, here, and here? Well, what are these? That's the LSB and that's the MSB for our one last combination where one plus one. Well, what's the MSB for all these other things? Well, it doesn't have one, it's zero. There is nothing greater than that. We have two possible outputs, an MSB and an LSB. And the way they're described is what's known as the sum and the carry out. And this is a neat way of defining them as opposed to LSB and MSB is because we can make an adder that feeds other adders, which feeds other adders, which feeds other adders, and we can do long form addition on a huge scale. This is what I alluded to earlier in introductory videos. The adder is a really neat device because it lends itself to what's known as the structural approach in VHDL, i.e. I can take a small component and hook it up over and over and over and over again to perform large addition for large numbers. So this is what I'm gonna to try to do in this series of lectures involving the adder. All right, so like I just showed you, I can have obviously the outputs in the long form addition, but what I can do is just make a truth table where I've got two inputs and I've got two outputs, the carry out and the MSB. If you're using a textbook, which puts the sum here and the carry out there, take it, build a large fire, and throw that textbook in it, because that's stupid. This is the way it should be written. Carry out sum. What's the addition of zero? Well, it's binary. It's, what's the addition of zero, zero? Well, it's binary zero. Zero and one should be a one. Zero and one should be a one. I'm saying this, excuse me, I should say decimal. What's the addition of one and one? It should be decimal two. All you have to do is, is write out zero, zero. Write out one, zero, one. Write out one, write out two. One zero. So what I'm saying is, is keep it in that order, MSB to LSB. Like I said, if you you can swap that truth table, yes, this is also true. You know, I'm just looking at this particular section right now. That is also true. It's substantially less easier to read than MSB to LSB. Okay, so if I have my block diagram, A input, B input, i.e. my entity statement, I've got an output CO and I've got an output sum. What are the expressions for sum? What are the expressions for carry out? Carry out should be really easy. What is that? How about this? A and B. What is sum? Should look like one of those gates that we've been talking about. It's the exclusive or. And that is my sum output. A, exclusive or, B. If you want to get tricky about it, I can just define the exclusive or as, excuse me, the sum as, well, it's still the exclusive or, A and not B, or not A and B. I can rewrite that like this, where this guy is A and not B, that guy is not A and B. What's happening? It's being or together to produce A and not B or not A and B. What I'm saying is, is these things are equivalent. How do I make this whole thing all together into a half adder? We'll just combine, and I'm gonna stick with this, the exclusive or definition, these two guys together to look something like this. There you go. A and B is equal to our carry out. Our sum is equal to A exclusive or B. And put that thing in a box, A, B, C, O, sum. What we've just created is what's called a half adder. Why is it called a half adder? The reason why it's called a half adder is because it doesn't really account for all possible combinations. Remember when I was doing that long form addition and I'm just taking, let's say one, adding it with a one. What I get out is carry out one zero and I'm sliding it down because there's nothing in the way and it's producing a one zero as my output. What if there was something in the way? Basically what I'm saying is what if I fed that carry out to another half adder? 
what I'm saying is now I can start hooking these things up. What if there was inputs into there? So I know that that was the LSB column. What should that input be from the LSB? It should be a zero. What if this was actually like midstream in something? You know, it has to take an input from something. So a half adder, it doesn't have inputs from a previous stage. Whereas a full adder accepts it's two input bits, i.e. the same thing, but it also accepts an input carry. So if I was to draw the block diagram for a full adder, I would still be adding A and B, and I would still be generating a carry out and a sum, but I have to account for a carry in. What I want you to do is remember this picture here. We are going to use that half adder a little bit later to make a full adder. Okay, but let's just look at this from some of the combinational logic techniques we've learned thus far. What is what is the truth table for a full adder? What how should the output behave based upon those inputs? Okay, so using some of the combinational logic techniques we've learned thus far, you should be able to produce a truth table. Take that truth table, put it in a Carnot map, use the Carnot map, come up with a minimum SOP expression. What you'll have created is basically what's called the data flow description, you know, VHDL, the data flow description. You've come up with a logical expression for it. And then we're going to go back and we're going to use that half adder to create full adders. And what we'll be doing is kind of using the structural approach, you know, using a previously defined component over and over to create a full adder. And then we're going to take it one step further. Take a full adder, put it in combination with another full adder. We're going to come up with a parallel binary adder. And you can put those in a four bit sequence. You're going to add two four bit numbers in. You guessed it parallel. Okay, you're using that previously previously defined structural component of a full adder, which if you remember right, was previously made of half adders. Okay, let's let's do the data flow approach first here. Let's just come up with a truth table for the full adder. Okay, so there's our bare truth table, just dividing it up there so you can see what's going on. And what is this? Well, it's not really an output. It's just kind of a memory aid for you. So you can go ahead and develop the truth table. And here's how I'm going to use it. Here's all possible combinations of an input. What are all possible combinations of input? Well, it's three bits, and I should put a CI right there to distinguish them. CI versus CO, one being an in, one being an out. All possible combinations of input, three inputs, so two to third, eight co possible combinations. The decimal column here is kind of my notes. What do I get in the decimal equivalent when I take zero, and I add it with a zero, and I add it with a zero? Zero, okay? When I add zero with a zero with a carry in of one. Okay, what does this look like? Well, it's zero plus a zero, but hey, this guy's coming in from over here. What's my output? What's well, a one? Okay, because it kind of slides through all those zeros, it just lands at the bottom. One. Now, here's this circumstance my carry in is zero, my A is zero, and my, oops, sorry, A is zero, my B is one. What happens? What's my output? It's also a one. Now, keep on thinking this longhand addition. What do you get for your, and let's just do one more. A is a zero, B is a one. What was that carry in? And I'm talking about this one right here. So that one is coming in. What is that one's sum? Well, the sum is zero. My carry out is one. Aha. Uh -huh. So it's the decimal equivalent, one plus one. Well, it's obviously two. Okay, so you should be able to fill out these columns for carry out and sum. How do I do that? Just use the notes column, okay? What is A one zero B zero C zero C we I zero one two two here is where the magic happens. This is the one and only case where I've got one plus one plus one. What is it? It's three. Take this decimal equivalent, put it in the truth table. What's it look like? There you go. That's the binary equivalence for zero, one, one, two, one, two, two, three. Just like you'd expect an adder to add to act like. Okay, what's the next step in coming up with an SOP expression for these things? Take our truth table and put it in a K-map. We don't need that note column anymore. Put that in a K-map, come up with the expression, minimum SOP expression. Take that, put it in a K-map, come up with a minimum SOP expression. So here's a blank K-map for both CO and SUM, and go ahead and just fill it out for CO. Okay, that's what CO looks like when it's populated. Go ahead and see if you come up with the groups that are necessary to make the minimum SOP expression. What I'm finding is just three overlapping groups. They're groups of two. All members within that group are adjacent and all ones are accounted for. Go ahead and see if you can come up with product expressions for the red 
blue and green. And what are we going to do? So we're going to create CO is the sum of products. Okay, so if you come up with red, blue, and green product terms, what I'm getting is B and C I, A and B, and A and C I. Put them in our SOP. There you go. Does this make sense? Carry out is generated anytime B and C are one. I mean, just think about our earlier example of a half adder. Anytime a carry out is generated is when two ones are coming in there. A and B, two ones. A and C I, two ones. What about this combination that's overlapping, i.e. triple one? Well, A and B and C I are all coming in as ones. What is the result in decimal number? It's three. Three has a carry out. Okay, so it makes sense. Your answer makes sense. Do that exact same procedure for the sum. Take this truth table, put it in a K-map, develop the product terms, and put it SOP in there. You will find minimization is extremely hard for the sum. Okay, you should come up with something like this. That's what the K-map looks like. It looks like a shot pattern if you've run like a half mile at extremely high speed. Um, how am I going to come up with the uh, SOP expressions for them? Are there any overlapping adjacencies that I might be able to grab? Can I grab a bigger group? The answer is, is no, not really. I've got to have four three product, three term products being summed together, i.e. the SOP. Okay, so my sum term is going to be a little bit larger looking than my earlier carry out, but that's the that's the way of it. And finally, our last term, check our work, looking good. So those are our minimum SOP expressions for, respectfully, our carry out and our summit. Okay, now I know that that is the minimum SOP expression for this, for the uh, carry out. What if I was to present to you the following circuit and see, does this also produce the carry out? Okay, and here's this circuit that I'm referring to. And, you know, the answer is, is maybe, you know, it might do the same thing as CO, but why would I ever do something like that? You know, the CO, it's my fully minimized SOP expression. Why would I ever go for something suboptimal like this garbage you might be showing you here, showing me here? And then do not rush to judgment so soon here. Do you see something in this circuit, which I just drew, perhaps familiar with something we've discussed thus far? I'll bring it to your attention right here. The half adder. Yeah, it's a suboptimized design maybe, but I got a bunch of these things lying around on my garage floor. You go ahead and just and now answer the question, does it perform the exact same function as, because if, if we're going to use this definition here, does it perform the exact same definition as our fully minimized SOP expression? Use what you know from our combination of logic. What is this output right there? That's a and B. What is this AND gate referring? Uh, what is that AND gate AND together? It's CI ANDed with this output. Well, what is that? The exclusive OR of A and B. So that's AND A exclusive OR B. What is this output together here? Well, it's ORing A and B and, excuse me, OR, CI AND A exclusive OR. I'm making a mess of it. Just read what I'm writing. Does this expression, is this expression equivalent to that? I don't know because it's got this weird symbol we don't use a lot. Well, expand it out. What is the uh, SOP definition of an exclusive OR? So expand that guy out. Carry out is equal to A and B or C and ended with not A and B or a and not B still doesn't really help me anywhere because it's not really an SOP expression. Distribute that C I into there. And I'm going to keep it in alphabetical order. Not A, B, C, I or A, not B, C, I. To illustrate what I'm talking about here, take this and put that in a K map. What does it look like? What I'm saying is, where is that product term located? In the K map, it's kind of reverse procedures. What we get is a K map that looks like this. Right? It's the same truth table, but they're grouped differently. What we've got is a group up here with three product terms, a group up there with three product terms, and a group right there with two product terms, namely AB. So what this is, that expression which I drew right here, it's just kind of a suboptimal K-map. It's a suboptimal SOP expression. All I did was I failed to overlap that group. I failed to overlap that group. The advantage is, is I got a bunch of those half adders lying around. I can use that previously defined component, a half adder, to create 
at least the carry out portion of a full adder. So it's reusing the component. All that exercise was just going to show you is that they are in fact equivalent. It's just a suboptimal mapping. What I'm saying is this one, the minimum SOP expression, is equivalent to our new updated version of the full adder carry out expression. How did I do that? Reverse K mapping. Let's take a look at the sum expression. Okay, the sum expression, if you remember right, isn't exactly the prettiest K map. And what I'm going to use is use our truth table in combination with what we previously obtained uh, to kind of maybe come up with an alternate explanation for this. And I know that we've come up with a minimum SOP expression for our understanding we should be able to use that one. But there might be an alternate definition that we could potentially use. And just look at the truth table. When does the output sum go high? When I've got one input of one, one input, one input, three inputs are one. That almost sounds like it's making a decision off of its odd, okay? What gate out there, which uh, which we've previously discussed, has a description that I don't necessarily use all the time, but it's true. It's high when it's odd. Okay, it's an odd number of inputs. How about the exclusive or? The output is high when the input is odd. Still matches for two input exclusive or. It's high when it's different. That's typically the, uh, the definition I use. What about a three input exclusive or? It's high when it's odd. What about an exclusive or feeding an exclusive or? What's this one's output? And just for the sake of argument, I'm going to go ahead and put those on its input. Well, the expression for this one should be A exclusive or B. What's this one? Well, it's A exclusive or B exclusive or C I. doesn't really help us much because I don't know what that funny symbol means. Why not expand these out? This is where your understanding of De Morgan's theorem becomes incredibly, incredibly important. Okay, so what? let's just take this first one here. What is the expression for an exclusive or? This one's simple. A and not B or not A and B. That's pretty easy. How do I expand this exclusive or out? Well, it's, let's say, green exclusive or yellow. That's the general format. That's what I want it to come up. That's my green. That's my yellow. <laughs> Put the greens where they're supposed to be. Supposed to. Put the, the yellows where it's supposed to. Okay, this one is easier here on the left-hand side. I should be able to distribute CI, excuse me, not CI into that. Not so over here, because look at this. I can't do that. I've got that big old negation bar on the top. How do I get rid of that big old negation bar? I'm going to have to go ahead and do to Morgan's theorem. So this one on the left here, let's go A, not B, not CI, or not A, B, not CI. Just reminding myself I distribute. Or, since I haven't done anything, let's just take that whole thing and put it down. And now I can do to Morgan's theorem. Everything else stays the same. And what's your result for your De Morgan's theorem? So I change the sign. These were my original operators, excuse me, uh, original variables. I have to negate them. What do I do now? Well, I still got those big negation bars, except I got two of them. What do I do with them now? I'm going to have to go ahead and do the exact same thing. A De Morgan's theorem for that one and a De Morgan's theorem for that one. There you go. And I know I told you never to do this, but I'm just going to do that step at once. Do you see what I did? I remove the double negations on those. Look at that. That looks like a foil right there. What is the results of that foil? There you go. Okay, um, some of you guys might have been surprised that by that leap of logic, but again, what rule am I using? I'm using rule 12. Some of the intermediary steps for that, that foil is first, outer, inner, last. What's that? What's that? That's a binary rule. A and not A, zero. B and not B, zero. What am I left with? Not A and not B or B and A. Finally, I'm left with this. Distribute my CI in. Now, all that work has been just getting rid of that big old overbar so I can distribute that CI in. What do I get as my result? Exactly like we had before for our previous definition of the sum, this thing right there. The punchline of this is, is it's an exclusive or feeding an exclusive or. What if I was to do that? What if I was to use the exclusive or output maybe of a half adder, feeding another half adder, i.e. the exclusive or portion of, because I know no, there's another AND gate in. What I'm saying is, is maybe I could take the output of this guy right here and do something with it, feeding another portion of a half adder. Okay, I'm saying I'm reusing it. So this is the exclusive OR of A and B. What's this other input here? It's CI. So I'm combining 
two half adders together to make a full adder. And let's go ahead and try that right now. Okay, so what I've done is the SOP expressions for CO, the X uh, SOP expression for sum, I've tied them both together using a reusable component, the half adder. And now let's go ahead and put the whole thing together. Let's take two half adders and make a full adder out of it. And there's going to be a little intermediary component that we're going to need too. So let's take our half adder and let's put it under the x-ray machine and see what's inside that half adder. And it's going to look like this, where the C out is ending the A and B inputs and the sum is exclusive or the A and B inputs. How do I use, how do I take a half adder and hook them up with some intermediary components to come up with our full adder expressions, which should be equivalent to our minimum SOP expressions? We already showed you what the minimum SOP expressions are for the carry out and the sum. I already showed you how a half adder could potentially be incorporated in it, but now what I'm trying to do is just hook them all together. What you do is you take two half adders, i.e. hence the name full adder half plus half whole, take the two half adders, stick them next to each other. So there's two half adders next to each other. I'm going to call that half adder one, half adder two. And what's this thing over here? It's the half adder, the guts inside it. And notice how I flip flopped it because I previously had carry out on the top and sum on the top. Just trying to match these definitions here. Let's go ahead and take the guts that we see for each individual half adder and put the guts right there, the guts right there. Okay, so there's what the guts of half adder one, half adder two look like. And one thing that may help our diagram a little bit is our external inputs for our full adder and our external outputs. Okay, so there's our sum and our carry out, our A input, our B input, and our C I in. Okay, so how do I hook up those individual half adders to come up respectfully with the sum, if you remember right, the sum was the exclusive or of A and A exclusive or B in turn exclusive or with CI. So how do we hook that up? And that's our sum output. We want to come up with a carry out output using that alternate definition right here, this circuit right there. We are going to have to use an accessory component. That accessory component is an or. Okay, so I'll redraw this circuit down here so you can see what we're looking for. Okay, there you go. So how do I hook up the half adders to make the sum? How do I hook up the individual half adders to create the carry out. And you know what I'm going to do for you because I'm a nice guy. I'm actually going to put that accessory component that we need right there. And pretty obviously that or gate and pretty obviously that goes to there. Let's do the easiest one first. The sum. It is exclusive oring and then exclusive, exclusive oring A and B, exclusive oring it with C, I. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to take the output. Let's exclusive or A and B exclusive or CI. So if you follow these paths here, what I'm doing is, is exclusive oring A, exclusive oring B, and then I'm exclusive oring it with C to generate my sum bit. Ultimately, I came up with that expression right there. Let me get rid of this green squiggly line so we can do the next portion of it, the CO. Okay, the easiest part to do is, is I'm going to be oring A and B from the external input again. So what I'm going to do is just take that carry out and bring it over to this OR gate. What is it oring? Well, it's CI anded with A exclusive or B. Where is an A exclusive or B output? Well, right there. But where's the CI and that output? Right here. Because what is that anding? It's anding A exclusive or B. That's its input. That's its AND gate input. What is its other input? It's CI. So what I'm doing is I'm taking, oops, and ORing that. Let me prettify this a little bit for you. Okay, and all I did was just kind of shove that half adder two back so I can see the uh, inputs of the OR. So let's go ahead and do the exact same thing we did with the sum. Let's go ahead and follow the circuit for CO. A AND B. OR CI ANDED with exclusive OR of A AND B. Again, OR together. Okay, that's our CO. It's exactly of the same circuit we've drawn here. I've used this reusable component, the half adder, to create a full adder with one tiny accessory component. This is a pretty neat thing because now I, potentially if I'm using VHDL, might define a structural component called half adder with inputs A half, B half, outputs sum half, CO half, and then use it two times and then create a full adder with inputs A full, B full, CI full, outputs sum full, CO full, and then what we're going to learn in our next lecture. How do I take a full adder with inputs A, B, C, I, sum, C, O, and use it to combine into a parallel 
binary adder. It's kind of prepping you for all the stuff that we're going to be doing in VHDL. And this is, I think, one of my favorite examples of how a digital logic circuit, a combinational logic circuit, can be defined in a structural approach, which lends itself in VHDL. It's a reusable component over and over. Okay, this concludes at least the introduction to combinational logic adders. Now, like I said, we're going to go into parallel binary adders, and we're going to start doing this in VHDL.